in China, every single time I was uploading a song, it was getting tossed into this like streaming platform called Wang Yi. I was like, holy shit, like my songs have like 5,000 comments. Like, what? What's going on guys? You guys are watching Kids Take Over right now, one on one. I'm actually here with uh, the really dope rapper from Vancouver for the first time. You know, I never really thought that this would happen so early, but I'm here with Davey No Money. How's it going? That's good, man. How you doing? What's going on, man? Nice to, nice to meet you. Um, it's funny because like my family friend, Vassal, who you know, he actually told me about you, uh, I think like a year ago. And at that time you had like, I wouldn't say you were like huge, huge, but you had like 40K, you know, like things were kind of popping off in China. But then now it's like, when I look at you, dude, you're, you're huge, you know, you're like, you're doing huge numbers. And out of everyone in Vancouver, I'd probably say that you're on top right now. I think so. I mean, there's a, there's another rapper, you know, Mercules. I know. So, <clears throat> okay. Well, he's on top, but he's not like. Mercules is yeah. super easy. We have a yeah. song and it's so, it's so sick. You did a song with Mercules. Yeah, I just like sent him a verse and he just got it done like immediately. Yeah. Like literally like, he was like, yeah, I like this. And then yeah. like 15, 14 minutes later, he just sent the verse back. I was like, bro, you snap like shit. Yeah. So. I mean, Mercules is really popping. I know that there is this other rapper. Well, there's Manila Gray too. There's yeah, Manila Gray, Manila Gray Crazy, like Angst. Mm -hmm. I love Angst music. Um, who else do we have here? Fucking smooth. So a couple of my friends, um, <coughs> like Lentra. Oh, sorry about it, bro. <coughs> but like Lentra and one of my really close friends, like Dan and Julian, they, they, they started something called Smoothie World. Smoothie world. You know, it's just like juice world but thicker. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh it's it's really it's really funny shit. They they opened for the gravy show and they did like a little skit. They were like Princess Peach and like yeah. Waluigi or Mario and Luigi. It was absurd, but it was really entertaining. And they're from Vancouver? Yeah, they're from Vancouver. Oh, that's it's really funny heard. shit. But yeah, I I would say I'm doing relatively well. It's sick. Dude, yeah, and and, and like it's just crazy because I never heard of you while I was in high school or anything. Um, so I'm kind of curious about like, you know, your, your come up actually. So let's start there. Okay. Tell me like, what kind of kid were you growing up? Like going, being in high school in Vancouver, how was that? Um, so I was homeschooled until grade eight. Yeah. Grade Wait, eight. why are you homeschooled? Uh, my mom was just like about it. Yeah. She didn't like. No, my mom was like, cause there's a school literally right there. Yeah. <clears throat> and my mom, well, my dad worked like full time, like nonstop. Shout out to my dad. He like he grinds. Like he yeah. like, works six eight, six days a week. Works for like eleven hours a pop. Yeah. He's a nut. But um, that's, so my, where, you, that's yeah. where you got the work ethic. I mean, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But my yeah. So my mom is like just super about like us. I guess my brother, sister, and I. Yeah. So she just taught us what we needed to know. Barely. Like I didn't learn anything until like first year university and to be honest i was i'm still a dumbass but uh you know after after high, homeschooling like i went into grade eight and it was kind of weird because i'm like relatively an awkward person yeah but um like i don't really know how you know like what like what would i have been if i went to elementary like well, a normal school, right? So okay. I don't really know my come up, like what my come up was, but I was like homeschooled, went to high school. But you, like, but you were always into music, or no? No, no, no. no. Mm. As far as music, um, I made my first song. I was like, I, I smoked like a blunt with some friends, and we found like a Chief Keef type beat, and then we, uh, I laughed over it for like eighty percent of the beat, and I was like, damn, this is kind of what I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's like pretty much like how it started. And then... Kind of as a joke, pretty much? Oh, complete joke. Yeah. Like, well, you know, I, I was writing poetry back in the day. I always kind of just liked poetry because, you know, my writing ability was terrible, but I, would, I feel like I'd be able to write, like, things that made no sense. But if you're like, oh, shit, like, they make sense. You know, like, <laughs> poet, sounds, yeah. poet shit. Like, yeah. you're like, oh, tree, branch, branch, tree. Oh, so deep. <laughs> oh, my God. You snapped. Like, yeah. so I kind of, maybe, maybe that's the reason why I got into poetry because... I could just make sense of nothing. Yeah. And then, uh, I guess, yeah, I just laughed over a Chief Keef type beat after being really influenced by, like, Chief Keef and, mm. and Gucci. I started with a, a crew called Broke Boy Gang. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It was and, like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was, like, how it first started. And we, were just, we would just, like, meet up and make a song, meet up, make an album. Why was it even Broke Boy Gang? Like, why did you guys call it that? Because we were not rich. Mm. And, 
I don't know. We originally it was BBG, and then we were like, "Okay, what does BBG stand for?" And mm-hmm. then we were like, the thing was like, "Oh, BBG stands for like BBG," but then we're like, "What does it actually stand yeah. for?" And then we we kind of just went with Broke Boy Gang. Mm. Um, but what happened to that? You guys split up? Or? Yeah. Well, we didn't really mean to split up. I just ended up going to university. Um, but I think right. I, I remember right before we ended like ended our Broke Boy sessions. Um, we were staying at a house at 41st and Granville, and that was the most unhealthy summer of my life. Uh, we we straight up had the last party we had the day before we moved out. There was like 450 people in this house, and it was like, but yeah. we per- we performed once or twice, and it was a sick time. But like you know, all my 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 lyrics aren't too absurd. They're definitely a bit ridiculous. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I was the one. I, I think I just fell in love with it, yeah. and then they were. Like Aiden, for instance, he works at Facebook now, mm. and he was probably easily the best, like MC Boy RD, and you know he just he was like, I'd rather just code, dude. And I'm yeah. like, that's fair, man. Like, yeah. don't even worry about it. But occasionally we still meet up and just make make a couple songs, and it's it's just a good time. Mm. But I mean, you also did your own thing other than rapping. I know before that you went from high school to university doing uh, kinesiology, or, or like, what did you do in university? Yeah, so I studied kinesiology, which is like. A poor excuse of being like a healthy person, I guess. Yeah. Um, it was entertaining. It was, you know, it was fun. I met some cool people, but mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, if I didn't have music while doing school, school would have really sucked. Mm-hmm. You know, like I had to balance my happiness with school and mm-hmm. music. But yeah, so I did that. I finished it. I'm glad I finished it. You had, oh, you finished that? Yeah, I, thought, I, fin- I, I finished it. Yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. No, 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 I didn't drop out. Damn. So my well, mom, my mom was like, "Yo, you should drop out," and I was like, "Nah." Yeah, like I'm, I'm like third year. Come that, on, like that, that's on. what I was gonna say. Yeah, because like that's kind of crazy. Your mom told you to drop out. Usually, it's like the complete opposite, where you're like, you know what, it's third year. But if if you're already, if you already have like a blooming career, why would you need to finish it? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know, like, how'd you make that decision where it's like, okay, I don't, I'm not gonna do anything with kinesiology in the future, but you know, what I'm saying like, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna drop out. I don't get that. I mean, I kind of view it as like. Why would I give up when I'm like 75% done? I only mm. have one more year left. And, you know, when I think third year is when Gravy blew up really hard. Mm. And I was like, I'm obviously not at the point where I could really eat off this well. Yeah. But then, you know, I was just like, why not just go to school, finish it, and just keep dropping tracks, really keep up the momentum. And then, um, you know, ended up doing decent. So it, I, I, and I really, I work off like being stressed. Like really? really stressed, like I work. That's how I work. Is like, like on, if, t- on like tight deadlines and stuff. Uh, to some extent, yeah. yeah. You know, like I I like the grind a lot. Yeah. And if I'm not working, I I'm like really anxious. Yeah. If I'm not doing something, you know, I'm not doing something productive, I get really anxious. That's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of like it kind of sucks because I want to do nothing sometimes, but then I'm like, shit, dude, I'm not like. Gotta do something. Yeah. I'm like, I yeah, I think I'm I might work a little bit too much. Like I'm like slightly uninspired right now, but yeah. I just made a hit with Lentra. So, yeah. I mean, maybe I'm back on it, so we're out here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, doing school and music was kind of a bitch, but... Well, how did you... Um, okay, so, for example, I'm I'm just finishing my second year of university right now, and then uh, I'm doing Kids Takeover at the same time, right? But it's like, you got to have, you gotta have like, certain priorities set. For example, I have the media outlet, then I... No, no, so I have school, mm. and then the media outlet, and then, like, I don't know, being fit, and then, like, spending time with family. How did you prioritize, like, the things in your life? Uh, I think... Eating cheap and like eating the same thing over and over again is like the most important thing. It saves you so much time. Uh, so like prioritizing like what you spend your money on and like how you eat. Yeah. And then that's probably number one because obviously everyone needs to eat. But number two is like I would say I would hopefully work out maybe three or four times a week. Um, maybe doing mm-hmm. like twenty minute jogs, like just not you know something small just yeah. to keep the blood the heart rate up. And then like. You know, I would wake up dumbass early. Like I would have Fridays off. I I wouldn't study Friday, and I would I would literally just go out of my way to wake up at like four in the morning and just write lyrics and like grind. Yeah. And like just have a a day dedicated just to making music. I remember there was like one day where I woke up at like four, made like three songs. I mean, mm. I mean now now I'm making way better songs, and making like one a day. But you know, I just yeah I would just go go the extra mile. You know like. Just grind a little bit too hard. I drank a lot of coffee. My teeth mm. are kind of yellow. It's mm-hmm. kind of funny because 
in the in the music video shining and like even some other like times when i post like just like me smiling with that like smile like snatch i think so yeah. my fans are like yo brush your teeth dude get <laughs> crest white strips i'm like bro fuck off i man. think it's time for you to get like grills or something man maybe like that'll hide it nah i don't think i want grills i want like I want, what veneers do you have veneers? oh veneers yeah but like i mean i have night i have relatively nice teeth. i wouldn't like, say the yeah, bottom ones are kind of fucked teeth. up mm. but like i don't know maybe i could get i have i used to have a pair of grills but they were like the cheap the cheap ones, yeah, yeah. like the jokes Damn veneers, aren't those like really expensive though? Yeah, know. they're like two K, two K. They like nub you down. Yeah, so you yeah. have little baby nubs, and then you put little yeah. little motherfuckers. I in know, it. like Bad Baby got veneers like recently, but hers turned out like super bad. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I'd be careful about that. But but uh, yeah. Also, I want to know like, have you ever failed a like an actual course? No, I got fifty on the dot in. Oh my god, uh, lucky. astrophysics one hundred and one, or like some intro astrophysics. Dude, lucky. I got. Fucked by that class. Dude, imagine, it was yeah. so so funny. I remember studying for that test, and I was like, like, for the final, I was like, man, I I gotta just pass this course. I like, I emailed the prof. I was like, please, I just gotta pass this course. I don't care. Yeah. She's like, help me. He's like, I can't help you, dude. Yeah, you're walking, you're walking yeah. with forty eight percent, and I end, I ended up finishing with fifty. He might have just bumped me up, but. I remember when I finished that final, I was like, I didn't get any of this shit. Like, yeah. So that's how it is sometimes in school. Like, you just want to finish it. You don't really care about if you actually learn something, or you just want to get it, get it done, right? But that's crazy. Fifty on the dot. I don't know, yeah, so, that was yeah. some rowdy shit. But I mean, I ended up finishing with like my top ten credits, or like whatever, like a like a master's or a, yeah. whatever the the third type of education would be called. Uh -huh. So I think I ended up finishing with like a three point like six. Mm, that's pretty good. 3.5, 3.6, yeah, yeah something like that. It's like not bad really at all. It's not yeah. bad at all, but I mean, it's obviously not like outstanding. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And and so you went to UBCO, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, Vassal, like our mutual friend, he always told me that you would always like be at the parties, right? So did you ever use the party scene to like get your music out there? Not really. What I would do is like, I would so I would make music with my roommate, and he went by Young Cashew. His name's Kyle. Yeah, and Funny as fucker. Like, this guy is absurd. I, I remember when he first started making music, he was, like, you know, just, like, kind of a timid dude. Maybe maybe it's because I didn't know him that well. Mm. But then I was like, yo, dude, like, you should make a rap song. Like, I'll produce it right now. And then he would just make some ignorant music. Like, ignorant music. And he just became such a boss. Like, such a such a hilarious dude. Mm -hmm. And then every time he'd go to the party, he'd be, like, wasted. He'd be, like, plugging the jack up, the aux, and be like, yo, young guy shoot. And then everyone would be like, young guy shoot. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, as far as that music goes, like that's that that that, that was the music. It was kind of plugging back into me because I produced yeah. all of it. But I mean, sometimes I walk into a party and then like Angelo, like Basil's roommate, yeah, and like even even Basil, he would be like, "Yo, like play your music." I'm like, I don't know, dude. Why but, not? Like you, you're actually shy to get to have people listen to your music. At the like party? I mean, I listen to my music to like critique it. You know, I obviously like enjoy my music enough to put it out. Yeah. Um. But, like, I don't really like being in a situation where, like, I don't really know people that and, like, my music's being played in the background. It's kind of just awkward. You feel like they're, like, talking bad about it or something? Or? No, 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 no. I don't care if people shit talk my music. Like, yeah. I kind of love, I, I, I've, like, love to learn how to get critique. Yeah. Sometimes it sucks. Like, you know, like, I put out a song today yeah. that's very different. You the know, ASMR like, song. The ASMR song. Yeah. And, you know, it's, like... People are people, some people are reacting differently to it because there's a different. It's not it's not a North American rhythm. Yeah, yeah. So nobody's really used to it. But then there's some people that are like, damn, this shit crazy. Like this is my new favorite baby noise song. Like this is this, this is yeah. that. So, I mean, it all goes. It's just like I got you got to take everything with a grain of salt. But. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I got that. I read some of the comments and I'd say it was a pretty positive reaction. But uh, you know, at the same time, like you kind of have to like push boundaries sometimes. You can't keep doing the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I know, that's, that's pretty cool to me. Um, you were speaking about Young Gravy, right? Mm. And you kind of, you're talking about in your third year of university, you, you met him? Uh, okay, how did I meet this guy? Yeah. I was in, what class was I in? I was in that astrophysics class. Wait, Young Gravy didn't go to UBCO? No, 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 no. Okay, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't, he didn't yeah. go to UBCO, but yeah. I was in this astrophysics class and he was like, he was just starting to put music out. He was like 150 followers, yeah. and I was like 200 maybe. And I sent him a message like, "Dude, you make the dumbest music I've ever heard." Like, like you Instagram DM him? No, I just sent him a message on on SoundCloud. Oh, okay. Like, People talk on SoundCloud. They used to back yeah. when SoundCloud was like more like community based. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, "Yo, dude, you make ridiculous music. Like, hit me out. We should make a song." Like, mm -hmm. cause he never showed his face before. I guess like October 2018. Really? No, 2017. And 
you know, I was like, either this guy's like a 45 year old dad <laughs> or like just ha- <clears throat> this has like a ridiculous, like ridiculously low voice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, without seeing his face, you can tell if Young Gravy is like young or old. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that's what you were saying. But um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I was just like really interested in making a song with him because I was like, damn, like nobody sounds like this guy. Mm-hmm. Like no, nobody's making as crazy music as this guy is right now. Like, you know, it's it's hilarious music. You can't listen to one song. You you can't get through a song without like kind of laughing. Like, yeah. You know, it's it's jokes. It's really good music yeah. in that sense. But it's like, so I, yeah. No, after I hit him up, it's like we just kind of became friends. I remember we got on like a Facetime call, mm-hmm. and I was just like, "Hey, dude, like you you seem cool." And then we just made a couple songs and. Well, I think Stain, Stain was the first one that really gained a lot of traction. Yeah. I remember, it did like seven thousand plays on SoundCloud in the first week, and we were like, "Dude, this is popping, like popping." Yeah. Like, so it's not like, because the way I thought of it, I thought it was gonna be like Gravy was really huge, and then he kind of like co-signed you, but that's weird that you met him when he had like two hundred followers. Yeah. Like, so no. you guys kind of grew together. Or yeah, yeah, oh. absolutely. Um, I mean, he blew up. The thing is, so he blew up off like Mr. Clean and yeah, One yeah. Thought, Two Thought. Yeah. So those songs went really, really viral, and like he had his own success through that, and yeah. then we dropped our project. Yeah. But we had all this music just sitting, like way before, like way, way, way. Like I remember the day he blew up, he called me. He's like, "Bro, like I, every time I open my phone, I'm getting like 800 followers on Instagram. Like this is ridiculous. Yeah. Like what's going on?" I'm like, "Dude, you're blowing up." Next day, he's like, "Yo, like I just got hit up by every single record label in the world." I'm damn. like, "Damn!" And like next day after that, he was like, "Yo, I'm coming to Vancouver." I'm like. Hey, dude. Let's do it, yeah. So he pulled up here, like met my mom. Like first five seconds, he met my mom. His pants were off, and my mom was like, "Hey, young gravy!" <laughs> and uh, over here, like in this like house? literally downstairs. Oh, yeah, damn, okay. It was jokes. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we we drove down to LA. It was a good time with a couple of my friends, and you know, I partied with him. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Exactly. I mean, yeah. uh, next thing I, I honestly want to ask you was, yo, what is your connection with China? Like I've seen, um, I've seen like. I think it was a dance video someone made and had your song in it. Mm. But um, I feel like a big portion of your come up had to do with China. So explain that whole story to me. So, I mean, I don't give any of the success in China to any of my success in America because in China, everything's so blocked out. So I'm just popular in China. You mean like like censorship and stuff in China? Yeah, there's there's so much censorship in China. So I'm like just popular in China as soon as you go out, like, to, let's say, Tokyo, like, I have no fans. Mm. Like, Japan, no fans. Like, Korea, mm. like, no fans. So, it's like, you know, in China, I'm just kind of, like, a legend in the underground scene, which is, yeah, it's sick. Don't get me wrong. Like, not many people have that opportunity. Yeah. But, but yeah, it, it, it sucked because I wish I was, like, popping in, like, Japan. Yeah. Or, like, or Korea because then it translates into North American servers. But, I mean... That being said, it's still wonderful that, you know, I blew up out there. But and long like, how, story, how did it happen? Though? Oh, yeah. So long story short, um, there's these famous people called TF Boys. Um, what do they do? I don't really know. I don't think... I think they're kind of like the Kardashian family. Uh, so they kind of just, like, endorse themselves through, like, random shit. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the 16-year-old kid, um, whether... I don't know if my music was popular prior, but... Um, the six, a sixteen-year-old kid, like uh, in the TF Boys, like the brother of, of the younger kid. I don't know his. I think it's like Alvin or something. Okay. He danced a choreographed dance to one of my songs that was like pub, like like televised. Really? What song? It's, it's called Yo Yo Tokyo, and it's funny because like it it was only out in North America for like two weeks. And mm, I was like, damn, the song. It. Yeah, I was like, damn, the song's not doing well. But the thing is, is in China, every single time I was uploading a song. It was getting tossed into this like streaming platform called Wang Yi, and Wang Yi was that like the Chinese Spotify? Yeah, Chinese Spotify. Yeah. And it's like I remember the first time I found it, I was like, "Holy shit!" Like my songs have like five thousand comments. Like, what? Yeah. Like I was like, "What?" I think it was like a reading break, and I was like, I was struggling on a song that I was trying to make with Graves. Yeah. That was like the first like big cosign that I ever got, and I was struggling really hard because he was like, "Yo, redo it, redo it, retake, redo it." And I was like, "Fuck." And, you know, I was really in the swamp. And then some, I, I woke up one day on Twitter and some girl was like, yo, you're popping in China. And I'm like, what? And then I'm like, no, I'm not. 
I don't think so. Like I was checking my statistics. I'm like, I'm not at all. And then she's like, here, check this website. And I like checked all these comments and it's just like thousands and thousands. Like of comments. Chinese comments? Yeah, Chinese oh, comments. Okay. And like, I just went out there. I went out there the first time in August, 2017 and every single show was sold out. Holy. That's it was crazy. like, yeah, like the biggest show we did in Beijing was like 800. It was like sold out. And I, that, I went from doing show like 14 people maybe to 800 sold out. Yeah. Like it was absurd. Dude, congrats on that. That's yeah, it was, it, was really, it was a really cool experience. I was at the stage in my career where I was like, oh, should I keep doing this? Like, I, I don't know if I should keep doing this anymore. Even after like, the China stuff? No, 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 no. Right, like pretty much oh. right before. And then like right before Graves hit me up, I was like, yeah, I'm just doing this for fun. And then Graves hit me up. I was like, whoa, like he makes a master beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. So Wait, who? Graves with an S. Oh, I thought you meant Young Gravy. Okay, I thought it was no, like his no, nickname no. or something. See, yeah, my mom always makes that mistake too. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Um, but uh, he did some of Kanye stuff. Yeah, he did. He oh. mixed Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Damn. Okay, that's pretty sick. Yeah, super super fire album. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so he hit me up, and then I was like, damn, okay, maybe I do have a chance in this because he's like an industry, like popping industry dude. Yeah. And then and then the China shit happened, and I was like, okay, I have to do this. Like, I have to do this now. And then Gravy dumbass blew up, and I was yeah. like, okay, this is. There's there's something here, so that's great, man. That's such a great confidence boost, so like that you were legit gonna give up, and then, you know, at at that moment, all those things like start lining up for you. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if I was necessarily gonna give it up, but it was like in the situation of my university career where I was like, should I just try in school harder yeah. to get a better degree to get make more money? Yeah. You know, like, but then that happened. I was like, all right, fuck school. Like, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, uh, when you're touring in China or just touring in general, right? I think artists. Obviously, their job is to like get the bag, you know, get the money. But um, it's if you go to like a city like New York, you're also trying to go there and like network with other artists, you know, go to studios and stuff. When you go to China, how is it like when you're meeting new artists? Because there's obviously a language barrier, right? Does that like hold you back? Essentially, if I hit up any popping musician in China, they'll be like, "Oh, yo, what's up, baby? No money." So like, but I still don't really know like how popping I am out there. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense because the analytics don't really like, you know. Like, I do more streaming on yeah. Spotify than I do in China, but I would never be able to sell the amount of tickets yet in North America that I do in China. So yeah. it doesn't really, like, two plus two doesn't add up, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, it makes sense. But yeah. there is definitely a language barrier, and I, I usually have, like, a tour manager that speaks. There we go. Okay, when yeah. that comes with me, but... That's smart. I mean, it's a really weird time because, you know, in China, they don't really know how to, like, turn up. Like, really? okay. they don't mosh. Like, I remember I did a massive music festival. There was, like, 8,000, 9,000 people there. And I was like, yo, split it up. Yeah. Like, split it up. And I was, like, getting, like, a translator to say, split it up. And then I was like, when it drops, like, run at each other. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because, like, happened? they just stood there. When it dropped. Like, like, and like, I was like, no, yeah. you guys are supposed to run. <laughs> Wait, so, like, there was a line in the middle? There was and, a line in the middle. Uh, and then they just all dropped their phone and, like, started filming oh, me. And man. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Is, yeah. There, is there footage of that? I could, I could try finding something. But okay. I... It's from um what was it? It was Plugfest Shanghai. Okay. If you if if, if there's videos online. Like I'm I'm gonna research that. I'm gonna find yeah. It. Yeah. Well, you're talking about um your tour manager. I'm not sure if you have a manager right now, but um I think it's super important for like I think analytics is super important in general if you're an mm. artist. Okay. I don't know how much time you have, but how important do you think is analytics um to your career, especially since you know you constantly got to find out like yo I'm popping in China, I'm popping in Chicago or whatnot. Um. I mean, yeah, like, if you have a bunch of people listening to you from a city, like, likelihood people will come to a show, you mm -hmm. know? But it's funny because on my tour, the number one date that's selling the best is in Boston, Massachusetts, but it's not on my top 50 most streamed cities. What's, so, what's your most streamed city? Uh, Chicago. Okay. So it's Chicago and LA. That's pretty much the two. Um, but, you know, it's funny because it's like, why isn't that? Like, why isn't it on top 50 list? where Chicago is and I'm selling half in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really make too much sense in that in like on that front, but I mean, analytics do tell you if people like shit or don't. Yeah. Like like that's that's pretty much rule of thumb. So it's like, you know, I posted a photo of me in a, in a night outfit and that's my biggest photo on Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah. Or I post like, you know, a very serious photo of me and no one cares. Mm. Cuz it's like, you know, that's that's like what I've branded myself as just like myself yeah just doing stupid shit so well other than just like looking deep into analytics you mentioned you know likes and comments a lot of your comments are just 
jokes, dude. Like, I, I can go to anything. Your YouTube songs, your Instagram comments, they're just, like, constantly memeing you, but it's, like, they're not memeing at you. They're memeing with you, right? So, far. so like, tell me how, how did you become such, like, a, like a, a likable meme? I mean, you know, Gravy, Gravy definitely helped pave the way of, like, you know, our success. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I feel like my front on, or, like, my brand or like who I am on social media is just kind of just me. In the end of the day, it's just me dicking around. Like I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah. it's just me not giving much of a shit. Yeah. And you know, I feel like nowadays everyone's so intertwined in social media and like caring about this and caring about that. And it's just like when you see like a random person that literally makes random music and like you know weird, kind of unheard of music. And then just comes forward on social media platforms and is just like himself. Mm-hmm. Then I, you know, I feel like it can speak to a lot of people because everyone wants to just be themselves. Well, let's say you're looking um, from the outside in, okay? Like you're looking at yourself. I feel like in rap specifically, being memed is like actually a big benefit to, like, to your career. Like you'll get more engagement, you know. I guess like you'll get more streams and whatnot. But um, do you do you believe that like record labels are actually trying to get these artists to like? have memes made about them like oh absolutely like six nine or like i don't know like fat oh, what's it, fat nick or like puya and stuff well i don't think puya has such like a like a culty fan base okay that like you know he doesn't even need to he drops a song and it'll do well like, just, yeah like he's but he's been like a legend on the soundcloud like that cult side for ages same with like suicide boys like they're crazy crazy mm-hmm. sick mm-hmm. but it's like you know it's just an avenue of marketing like really like i know josiah I've I've seen a bunch of other people who I know for a fact are on labels that have like tons of memes made of them yeah. that like that sometimes you know it's just it, it's kind of like obvious that it's promotion like at the same time like everyone wants promotion and yeah. you might as well like if you just have the money I mean, just buy it and yeah. go crazy yeah. and then like it'll just translate to plays and yeah. then translate to more popularity really true true I feel like um. I feel like with joking, like when rappers joke a lot, like it's totally cool. You'll get your engagement there. But there's certain times when you'll accidentally slip up and like do a joke that's too like insensitive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to ask. Well, like, I mean, I guess yeah. I like the whole thing about Lil Pump. Yeah. Like Lil Pump just like he here's like an ignorant line, you know, like there's a line of things that you just don't want to pass. And like he's just been passing it. Yeah. So like that that was his brand, you know, like that was that was the whole reason why he became popular is because he He's just had, had, had no filter, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like there's obviously some things you don't want to say. There's obviously some things like ethically and like morally you wouldn't want to say either. Like, yeah. but I mean, I feel like it's it, it's up to you, really. If you want to cross those lines, go for it. But yeah. I have no interest in doing it because I just genuinely wouldn't do it myself. What's your uh, what's your take on like canceled culture? Well, didn't Boy Boy West Coast just get dumbass canceled recently? Uh, the Ram Riddles thing? No, it was Ram Riddles now. Like, like he said something stupid about Ram Riddles on No Jumper. Is that what you're, is that what you're referencing? No, 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 no. Oh, he okay. like he like said a bunch of words to some lady over text. Oh, and, okay. Like, like he got canceled. I think he got. I'm pretty sure he got canceled. Yeah. I, I've been I've been like. People, like, hit me up about Boy Boy West Coast. I'm like, dude, don't you know he's canceled, like, like yeah. shit right now? <laughs> and then, and then, you know, like, I really believed in his work. I actually was like, damn, this guy could become really popular. He could yeah. become, like, the next, like, Katy Perry. You never know. Like, he was making <laughs> some pop music. And yeah. it's, like, it was really catchy. And if he, if he just probably sold himself to songwriters, like, he would be making hits. Mm. No, no doubt. Yeah. And we got, the, we got the hit machine back here, too. What is that? It's a grandfather clock. It's going to go off. Five uh, times? Yeah, because it's five. All right, it's done now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's something that I really want to ask you. So, growing up, did you ever go to Faded in the Park, the music festival? Uh, No. No? Uh-uh. Okay, because I just find it unbelievable that now, if you look at the lineup, you're performing for this year's Faded. Mm-hmm. Dude, how does that feel? Because it feels Faded, pretty good. Faded is like the biggest festival in BC, mm-hmm. I'd say so. Yeah, how does that feel, man? It's pretty good. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it should be a good time. I don't really genuinely like the festival. Like, I don't really like going to festivals yeah. anymore. It's just like, you know, I kind of like keeping myself a little mm-hmm. bit more now. Are you kind of past that stage of just like, oh, I'm backstage with all these artists, you know, all these celebrities and stuff? Like, you're kind of past that? Uh, I mean, some, you know, when you're in that situation, some people just, you know, it's like 
people understand if like a musician knows you and a musician knows you they don't necessarily need to talk to you like most of the time it's kind of just like it's not really awkward but also especially in the rap community or like that type of community of just like you know ego community perhaps yeah. is like why would you why would you get in their face and be like hey man what's up like i'm a big fan like when you know it's kind of hard to talk to some musicians but i i you know i don't really meet many i just work with producers really mm. like lentra and y2k and um yeah that's that's it because mm. it's like sometimes i remember there was one session i had with y2k and uh this guy pulled up and he's like i'm gonna beat you i'm gonna outwrap you and i was like bro why don't we just try to rap the best together mm -hmm. but i you know it is like a, it's a game right so yeah and also there's always a like if you go to rolling loud there's always like a ton of cameras around and stuff too right so kind of have to be like careful for what you say and stuff like that too but um but you say you don't like festivals but this is different man it's your own it's your own city like faded is it's for vancouver pretty mm -hmm. much so but it, it's funny because you know like not many people know me from here like I was gonna ask you about that too. Yeah, it's, it's like, like that's strange. Why? Why? Is it, that? Well, no one likes you until everybody likes you in the city, in your main city. Like every single rapper, except for that I know personally, except mm -hmm. for Young Gravy, is like no one cares for that rapper in that city. Really? But it cares like yeah. like more about even a rapper with the same amount of clout in that city more. You know, yeah. it's like it's weird. Mm. I mean, it's gonna be kind of cool because don't, don't you think in the crowd that you'll see like some of your friends or people that you know from Vancouver? Yeah, I, probably. I don't think I'm performing on the main stage. I'm performing on like some some other stage, but yeah. I mean, it's still gonna be cool. Do you know who's performing at the same time as you? No, I have no idea, honestly. Yeah. Uh, probably somebody, I guess. Hopefully, yeah. it's not someone good, man. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Gravy's performing right after me, okay. so we're doing like Baby Gravy type shit right back to back. I think it's gonna yeah. be Manila Gray and then me and then Gravy. So. But I'm not too sure. I I got I just got an email that I got like my pass, my like backstage pass. So I'll see you there. Oh nice! Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see you there. But um, it's so funny because during the interview you're like coughing and stuff. And uh, one of the questions I actually wanted to ask you was, "Yo, what is this thing with you constantly getting sick?" I don't you, know. You don't even know. It just fucking sucks. That's all. Like I so I don't really sleep that well. Yeah. Like I think I drink too much coffee. Yeah. We've already had like three coffees today, so that could be it. Yeah, um, coffee. Um, I think coffee a, is going to give you. Yeah. yeah, it's a stimulant. So yeah. I mean, my brain's always going. Yeah, uh, it's also probably why I'm anxious. But um, yeah, it's pretty much it. I just don't sleep that well. Yeah, and yeah. then my it's like you know you'd expect an immune system after getting battled so much to just be stronger because you know you break your leg. Yeah, like the bone becomes stronger. Yeah, right. Just so, but I guess that doesn't work. Um, literally, like I got sick. I did a show in Wisconsin, Matt, Madison, mm -hmm. Minnesota, Minnesota. I did a show in Minnesota, got sick, went to LA, got better. Three days later, got a sinus cold, mm. came here, it was blowing out blood. And I was like, man, this wow. sucks. And then now yeah. I'm fine now. I think it's just allergies, but I'm, you know, this is last year I was sick like 80% of the year, but this year I've been, only been sick for like maybe 20% so far. So that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah I'm doing well. I mean, I'm asking this because, dude, like anyone in my family knows that, dude, I get sick so often. It's like mm. the exact same thing. Yo, it's the worst thing it in the sucks, world. It just sucks, dude. Like, sucks. do you ever just sit there for it's a second and be like, yo, like people are so lucky that they're not, like they don't have a headache right now. Or something. Well, I mean, I definitely, there was one time I was super sick in China and I was like, man, this sucks. Like, why, like, why did I have to get sick? And like, I was performing and like, right, I, I the last show in Shanghai, I got rushed to the hospital. Like I was dying. That's like, crazy. It was rough. And... It's like, why am I always sick? Like, why does this always happen to me? Yeah, I, I, and I eat, I it, eat right? healthy. Like, yeah. you know, I take care of myself a decent amount. Yeah. Like, but it just fucking sucks, dude. dude it, it does suck. If I, if there's like, a, for example, if I needed to post this video on a deadline and I got even like the slightest headache, I'm not, I'm not posting it. Like until my headache is like cleared or whatever, mm. it, then I'm just blocking out everything else. Is it, is it like that for you? No, I made like most of my big songs when I was like While sick. sick. Yeah. Props like the, I don't, the song, I don't know how you, do it, you know, the, like don't get sick, don't get strep, don't get bronchitis. Don't get bronchitis I yeah. literally had strep and bronchitis at the same time. Oh my god! And that's why my <laughs> voice on that song was fire. Yeah. Like my, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Don't you hate um, flying then? Because if you're like constantly traveling or like on a tour bus, you get sick more often when you're traveling, right? Oh yeah. So uh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's probably why I'm sick. Yeah. To be honest, like the tour tour bus shit sucks. 
but it's fun. Yeah. But I mean, two days in, I mean, you're sick. Yeah. yeah. So uh, flying, flying is only really bad if you have a sinus infection. I had a sinus infection coming back from LA recently. Oh my god, that Worst was thing? so painful. Yeah. That was like, I was just like, like sh- like shaking. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, on the way down, and people beside me were like, yeah, what's up with this? Like, is this guy okay? This and guy I was like, cool. uh, yeah. it's like nutting, dude, the whole way through. <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. The last thing I actually want to ask you is, our whole thing is called Kids Take Over, right? Mm. You're still super young. How old are you? I'm 23. Okay. What, kind of young. Yeah. What was your favorite part about being a kid? World of Warcraft. I never played that. I actually never played that. Literally, like, yeah. yo, so vanilla, classic vanilla WoW is, is re-dropping, like, right before my birthday. Or, yeah. no, 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 right before my tour starts. And yeah. I was like, might have to cancel the <laughs> tour low-key. Like, yeah. shit is so gas. Oh, my God. Like, World of Warcraft, there was, like... You know, I didn't really have too many friends going into high school, and like World of Warcraft, really just. That's probably why I'm. I have a good work ethic. On World of Warcraft. Because I would, I would, I would, I would, I would put like, I put like twelve hour days in, like yeah. easily, like not even like just sit there and just grind. And put in the work, eh? yeah. And I feel like I translated World of Warcraft into another computer program, and luckily it actually makes money. Yeah, <laughs> and I took that dub. Yeah, I took that massive dub. True. So a big W for you, man. Yeah, big dub. Yeah. Congrats. Well, uh, I just want to say thanks, man. Like, I enjoyed sitting down with you. If people don't know, we're actually at your your house or your mom's house. My house, motherfuckers. Pull yeah, up. yeah. You're, Pull up, motherfuckers. We're at his house right now, and uh, let's. Uh, I want to go to the studio, your studio after your home studio, and just like check out some of the stuff you're making. But uh, other than that, uh, I hope to see you at Faded, man. Let's okay. go. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. So this is one on one, and it's BB No Money. Yo, thank you guys for watching that one-on-one interview. We had so much fun shooting that. It was actually shot at his mom's house, by the way. But uh, yo, I know a lot of you Young Gravy fans are watching this video. If you want to see me interview Young Gravy, let me know. He's going to be here in a month. But otherwise, it's uh, it's time for the top comment. So on the last video, E. Rich commented, Thanks for your transparency. It's rare that a YouTuber who's connected to the music industry opens up in this way. And the background track is dope. Yo, E. Rich, I appreciate you so much. And if you guys want the top comment, just comment below on this video. Otherwise, yo, follow at Kids Takeover IG on Instagram and subscribe.